1, Episode 5, Upgrading Your PC. upgrade your computer to get a few more years out of it instead of buying a new one which would cost much more. The first thing you should do is clean it out with some canned air. Bad Adobe. <laughs> okay fine, why can't I use my canned air? It's so fun, it sprays and... Because it gets dust everywhere. Okay fine. Use a <laughs> vacuum cleaner instead. This is Plaza's computer and as you can see it's not been cleaned in about two years from that pile of dust. So, now I can see why the canned air is not such a good idea, because that, I don't want to be getting in my face. You should clean your computer at least once a year to keep it from overheating, which is bad. It will ruin your stuff. It can burn your hard drive, and your whole computer could actually catch on fire. After you clean it out, now you have to open it up and clean the insides out. And every hard drive case, every case is a little different. So you got to look at your manual to see how you open it up. Ed's the hardware expert, so he's going to show you the different parts that are inside this PC and like different things you can upgrade. Ed? Well, this is your power supply, your CPU, PCI cards, and also you can be your video card in there, and your RAM, CD-ROM drives, and your hard drives. One of the several upgrades you can do is upgrade your RAM, which is here, and which will help you um, run more programs at, at a time. It's but also good for... 3D game. The way that you can do this is by pulling these two tabs outward. Yep. RAM should come out. And there's also different types of RAM. So consult your computer manufacturer to find out what kind of RAM you need, because otherwise it won't work. Now it just pops right in here. If your hard drive is running out of space and you still want more stuff to put on, you can easily install a new hard drive for more space. Now there are several types of hard drive, and um. Two types generally are notebook and desktop hard drives, which is right here. And um, they have different types of connectors. This one happens to have a IDE. There's also um, serial ATA. Now check your existing hard drive to see what jumper settings at. Jumper jumper is right here, and if it's set to master, you um, set the new hard drive you're putting in to uh, slave, and if it's um, Slit in a cable slot. Put the new drive on cable slot. Different cases have different ways of putting hard drives in and out. Um, some cases have hard drive rails, which you can see right here. You put two screws through the rails and then put them into the um, hard drive. Or other cases have ways where um, you can just put the screws directly through the cage here and right into the hard drive. Now, after, after you do that, you slide the hard drive in. Rails make things so much easier than screws. Trust us on this one. It should click in. Now, make sure you connect your 4-pin power supply to the 4-pin connector, which is in your hard drive. And, and you attach the and secondary. You, and you um, connect the IDE cable to your IDE connector here. And I mean, be careful with this because you might bend the pins if you're not careful. And bend and the pins aren't push fun. it right in. And there you go. You got your hard drive. If you want to add a DVD burner, it's very similar to the hard drive and very simple. You just slide it in here and attach the IDE, IDE and power supply. They also operate a master and slave drive, so you got to make sure you set the jumpers again. Next, all you, all you have to do is close this thing up 
And the next time you start Windows, you just have to install some drivers for your new hardware. You can also save all this trouble and just get an external hard drive and save yourself the trouble of opening up your case. Yeah, all you have yeah. to do is take this, plug it into your empty USB hub. If you want to buy a new parts for your computer, you can go to a website called Newegg.com. You can buy a lot of parts and they're really cheap. If you have any questions about technology, you can go to our social computer help network, Tecra.net, which is the parent company for Tecra 901. You can submit a question there. But if you want to contact the show, you can contact us at 901 at Tiger.net for email, or you can call us. What's our phone number, Ed? 610-572-2730. And either, those, either the email or the phone number, you can email us or call us with social, show suggestions, comments, questions, hate mail, whatever you want to send us. And you can go to our website, 901 to Tiger.net, and download an iPod version of the show. Ooh, iPod. This is all the time we have for Tiger 901. I'm Mike Dovin. I'm Ruby Rashawn. See you next time.